Welcome back to another episode of Sex and Whiskey. Albeit this is going to be a different episode as I, RJ Durante, one of your co-hosts, I use the pronouns he, him, will be going solo today. There will be no Nikki, unfortunately for all of us, uh, so I'm going to have to lead this ship myself. Today's episode is going to cover vasectomies. Now, I got a vasectomy in October of 2021, and I kind of want to take you through my journey for you to better understand um, a a surgical intervention um, for people who produce sperm uh, as a way to prevent future pregnancies. Um, It is going to be pretty carefree, pretty loose, so just bear with me as we go through. So my wife and I have been together, married almost nine years. Uh, We have one child and we both made the decision that it was time to not have to worry about that again. Uh, So I took it upon myself to schedule an appointment uh, for a consultation for a vasectomy. Now I contacted a urologist. Um, There are certain specialties within urology. Um, Some deal with everything involving uh, the cancer side of urology um, and some lean towards the surgical side of urology, specifically in vasectomies. And that is where I went. So I called up, asked for the first available appointment. Um, I had my consult a week later. I sat down with the physician. Uh, He asked me very straightforward questions about why I wanted a vasectomy. um, And after I briefly explained that I didn't want kids anymore, that was it. He said, okay, let's get you on the books. Um, he did go through the, you know, the, the precautions. Um, he went through the adverse outcomes that might come with a vasectomy. Um, but everything sounded very straightforward. It was a very smooth and easy process. Um, very open and honest discussion, which is great, especially to have with any uh, of your physicians. So I was eager and kind of looking forward to getting it done. Um, We put a date on the books, which happened to be the following week. So yeah, from consult to actual surgery was one week. Um, Not everyone will have that same uh, course of action. I know that right now, um, vasectomies are actually a a popular topic uh, and a uh, popular surgical intervention. Um, So you might see a longer wait list in between times because there's only so many urologists who are able to do them. But I will say, um, if you are 100% certain, it is the route to go. Um, It is a safe and a 100% effective alternative. Um, So if you're so inclined, it is definitely the path to go down. So for me in particular, I wasn't really apprehensive. Um, I know the idea of anyone doing anything uh, to your scrotum is not the highlight of your week, but I wasn't particularly nervous. I really trusted my physician. So this is kind of what actually happened through the procedure. Uh, You get in, um, the advise you um, to bring, bring a pair of tight fitting underwear, um, but to wear um, looser clothing there. So you're comfortable. Um, I arrived, uh, the nurse asked me to get undressed from the waist down. And I laid on the table. Uh, The nurse then uh, actually tapes your penis to your stomach. So it does not interfere uh, while they're actually down there doing the procedure. Um, The physician came in, uh, put a sterile field around me. Um, and then just kind of, there's like a cutout where, uh, your scrotum actually is. Um, and it's kind of like for obviously, so they can see what they're doing. Um, and I had AirPods in and I was listening to music and I was somewhere else in my mind, uh, when this was actually happening. So the physician, um, in my case, there's a couple uh, ways that vasectomies can be done. Um, One is what you consider your grandfather's vasectomy, which is the conventional vasectomy. Um, And that is a scalpel with two 
not large incisions, but decent enough incisions on each side. Um, they go in um, with tools and are able to uh, slice the vas deferens, which is what actually um, allows transportation of the semen into the urethra during ejaculation. Um, and it just inhibits that process from happening. Now there's a newer form, which is the no scalpel vasectomy or the minimally invasive uh, vasectomy. I had the um, no scalpel vasectomy. It was a um, very minor incision uh, at the base of my scrotum. Uh, they went in with uh, two tools and actually cut out my vas deferens. Um, and then uh, this was this was the worrisome part when you smell burning. Um, so they actually cauterized the wound inside. Uh, so it would completely be cut off. Um, and also there was no vas deferens and that was not growing back. Um, that was removed out. Uh, he actually showed it to me, which was wild. Uh, but I was like, oh, wow. That's very interesting. Thank you for showing me that. Um, it was sealed up um, with uh, sutures that eventually just disappear um, and put on my tight fitting clothing, uh, my tight fitting underwear, I'm sorry. And that was it. That was the procedure. All in all, um, from the 10 minute wait in the lobby to the five minute pre-discussion about what was going to happen, the 20 minute procedure itself, and the five minute afterwards getting my clothes back on, that was 40 minutes. I was in and out. Um, they advise you to have someone else there to pick you up and drive you home. Now, in my case, I got a local anesthetic. Um, I know some do general anesthetic, but it's not, it's not something that I would see that would be needed really uh but again everyone's case is different mine i just got an injection uh directly under my scrotum which is not the greatest thing that has ever happened to me but uh kept me numb through the procedure so i'm happy about that <laughs> so i have uh, um, tight fitting underwear on i'm in the car with uh, my wife and our son uh, drove home now it was really important uh, that you pretty much do nothing for two to three days, uh, minimally invasive stuff, no lifting, anything like that. Keep on with the tight fitting underwear, um, ice packs, frozen peas, anything just to keep that area down there numb. Um, unfortunately, I was not a great listener uh, and I noticed some discomfort over a couple of days and the doctor simply stated, you know, you're doing too much and it happens. Um, because obviously I, I was kind of very eager to get back to work. I was eager to uh, help more around my house. And it's just something that isn't feasible when you have the procedure. So I was out of commission for a max of four or five days. Um, and then I was fine. I was completely fine. Um, healed beautifully. Uh, didn't really have any after issues past that. So um, they say after... A week, you can get back to sexual activity. I waited two weeks um, just to really make sure. Um, and then uh, they book you an appointment uh, to see a cytology lab. Um, and in that lab, they actually can do your sperm count and see if there's any viable sperm left. Um, so my appointment was three months out. And again, this was 2021. So we're still in the middle of the ongoing pandemic. Um, and December was just not a great time for anybody. Uh, December quickly turned into January, February, March. Next thing you know, it's it's May. <laughs> um, and uh, called the lab and they had an appointment for June. So that's when I was able to go. Um, now in your head, you might have these, these visions of what a cytology lab is. Um, because what you're basically doing is going to a place to give your sperm to someone for them to look at. Uh, and in this case, you are masturbating into a cup so they can count your sperm. Um, it's not as glamorous as it sounds. I, in my situation, I called the lab. Uh, they had this appointment set. I left work. I went over there and um, there was options of what you can do. Um, the option was either A, you bring a sample that has been 
put into the cup within the past 30 minutes um, because uh, sperm does die. It has to stay at a certain temp. Um, or, and this was their recommended, um, you know, recommended uh, form was to come, uh, double entendre, was to come down to them uh, and actually use their cup there, uh, going to their uh, private facility um, and give your sample at that time. So that's what I chose. Um, and, and there's a lot of weird thoughts as you're going there. First off, you're basically going to a new location to jack off. Um, and I know that's vulgar, but that's, that's, you know, that's what I'm calling it. Uh, so you get to this place, uh, and my unfortunate situation was, it was actually a, it's a hospital that I, I used to, uh, work at at one point. Uh, I was a student there. Um, I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for, uh, quite some time now. Uh, so I was very familiar with this. I've never been to the cytology lab. So this was a new experience for me. I made my way up uh, to where I thought it was. And I was right. I was right floor and everything like that. But I um, I just could not find it. So I asked for help. And, uh, you know, how people are very curious about, why are you going to the cytology lab? And it's like, none of your business uh, doing some stuff. And they're like, oh, okay. Um, so I was escorted to the cytology lab, checked in, um, and the, uh, lab worker there gave me a sterile cup, made me fill out a form. Uh, I filled it completely out. You actually had to say how you were donating the specimen, which was weird. Um, writing out masturbation on a form, never had to do that before. Uh, and, uh, they gave me a key to a bathroom. Uh, to go donate my sample. Now, in my mind, and I've seen, you know, uh, movies and TV shows that have showed fertility clinics where uh, men go where uh, they do the same thing. Uh, they're given like material. Uh, there's like couches in the bathroom and they're able to like have this like reassuring stress-free environment to, you know, do the deed. That was not my situation. That was not my situation at all. I went into a hospital bathroom that was a single single bathroom that I am the only key to. So no one was getting in. Thank God. I get in. The sink is stained. Uh, don't know how. Don't know with what. But it was definitely stained. There was a mirror um, and then a toilet. And I'm, you know, I'm 6'3". I, uh, I moved you know, half a foot that way and half a foot that way. And that's the room. So uh, my other fear was, oh God, I really hope the internet works here or else I'm in some trouble. Um, luckily it did. Uh, I did what I needed to do, obviously. Um, there was a weird thing of also having a cup involved and timing everything correctly. Um, so that got done. I walked out of the bathroom again very weird everyone knows exactly what you did but hey for a good cause gave it to the uh, researcher and later that day i found out that i had non-viable sperm there was nothing living nothing left um so i could go have fun in a carefree environment um and i'd like to say on a more personal note to those who are you know worried about uh vasectomies i know there's a lot of discussion about feeling less of a man because you are giving away this like this manhood this this idea that you can't be a man without you know sperm in your balls it's not true uh i i don't know who makes this shit up but it just it really doesn't matter if anything you're just doing something um you're just being a good partner uh, you are kind of alleviating the stress of going through surgical interventions for your partner um, that, you know, when a, 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 a vasectomy has so, so few adverse outcomes versus the multiple alternatives. Um, so I would encourage you to educate yourself, go out there, look up the real facts, the real figures, um, and understand that it definitely is something that you could be doing for your partner, you could be doing for yourself. Um, and I know some of you out there have other questions. Uh, one of them being, well, what comes out? Um, 
still there's still seminal fluid uh so you still do ejaculate there's just no sperm in there sperm are microscopic so um you you still come <laughs> i don't know it does, air doesn't just poof out uh or anything like that uh it's that's that's not what happens um there are some hesitancy that uh there there's rumors of impotence erectile dysfunction uh, from vasectomies and nothing that i've seen nothing that i've read up on um if anything i know uh the the most adverse outcome that i've seen is depression and i think a lot of that stems back from the idea of feeling like less of a man or you you have lost something some you know some sort of manhood part of it and you haven't you really haven't you have to trust me on this uh if anything, I feel more like a man because now I can uh, I can do whatever I want <laughs> and uh, with with no fear um, because obviously my partner and I uh, love and trust each other and we've been together for so long. Uh, we know that there is no nefarious um, STD or STI waiting out there for us as we are just solo partners with each other. Um, so I can I can have fun, fresh assured, uh, without bringing another human life in the mix. So again, I will close out by saying, go out there, do your own individual research if you want. But I will tell you from my, you know, like the nursing background and um, my own experience that it was well worth getting it done. Um, I'm happy. Nothing has changed about me except not having sperm. And I'm completely okay with that. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, there are some great resources out there. Feel free to look them up. I will link them in the article that will come with this. Um, and, you know, just try and do something amazing for your partner. So go out there and get a vasectomy. Yeah. This has been RJ for our very short uh clinical episode of sex and whiskey i'll catch you all later and next time don't worry nikki will be here thank you